This is a demonstration duct for tie rod reinforcement. It's a positive pressure reinforcement method. It uses 12 gauge hanger wire uh, strung through the duct with a hook uh, termination on the end of it. We use two and a half inch square washers. This is called a volcano washer. We turn, have the edges turned up on this washer when, and when this washer is applied to the duct, it's applied with that turned up edge away from the facing so that the washer doesn't cut through to the facing. The wire is just standard 12 gauge hanger wire like used in the acoustical business. We're going to use the fast loop tool manufactured by Amcraft and we're going to put this loop on there. You notice that that is a, a, a full 180 degree bend loop. I put the wire into the tool I press the button and I end up with the proper loop. At this time now we'll put this duct together. The next step that we'll do is close the duct. We'll be stapling and taping and then we will apply pressure to the duct. You'll notice a sag support that we install in the duct. This is three quarter inch conduit, thin wall conduit with two and a half inch washers on both sides. We use a sag support on wider duct. Duct widths of 48 inches or wider require this sag support. The other thing to remember is a sag support is not reinforcement. It's not in the proper place for reinforcement. So the sag support goes in. What it does, from the, it keeps the board, the duct, from trying to collapse once you get to excessive widths. So now we'll put this duct together. Requires stapling. So we'll put staples in again, two inches on center. Now there are other methods to do this termination. If you look in the duct construction standard, uh, you'll see those. It shows you the scheduling required for tie rod reinforcement. In this particular case, we have to put in six rods here, four. I don't need the next rod because I have the end cap down there. But these rods for this size duct go 16 inches across the duct and they go 16 inches down the duct. So that would be the, the reinforcement. The scheduling is in the manual. The alternate termination methods are in the manual also. So now we tape this. We want the tape to be centered about that stapling flap. Want to use the squeegee and squeegee that tape down. We always apply enough pressure and use the squeegee enough so that we end up with the scrim pattern from the facing showing through the board. Now, what I want to do is demonstrate on this board. Uh, the pressure capacity, carrying capacity of the duct system. This is a duct system reinforced for two inches of positive pressure. So we'll lay the duct down so that you can see all of the uh, reinforcements easily and, and look at the uh, surface of the duct. I've got a pressure gauge that I'll attach to the duct and then I'll use this shop vac to apply air pressure. This is going to be a bit noisy.
So now as I apply pressure, I'll call out the readings and I'll take this up to two inches of water pressure and we'll see what the surface looks like. There's about a half inch, there's one inch, there's inch and a inch and a half, and there's two inches of water pressure. You notice at two inches that we begin to barely see a little bit of quilting effect around the facing. So there's two inches. I'll take this duct up, there's three inches. I'll take this duct up to four inches of water pressure. And you see it's still pretty flat, but we're beginning to get a severe distortion around our washers. I might add that when we do testing of new configuration of reinforcement or something with a duck, we always run those tests at three inches of water pressure instead of two as a safety factor. What I want to do now is remove the reinforcement so that we can see what, it, what the duct would look like without reinforcement to give you an idea just how well the reinforcement works. I'm taking small pieces of pressure sensitive tape and just sealing the holes where the reinforcement rod went through the duct. Okay, so now we've resealed the duct. We'll run this experiment again. Something I want you to watch for is how much bow we get into the duct. I'll take it up high enough pressure, we'll actually fail the board. The way you'll, you'll know when failure has really occurred is you'll begin to see a crease form in the duct. Usually it comes in at an angle, the corners stay fixed, the center bows out and so we end up with these diagonal lines. Now that we've sealed the holes, we're going to apply pressure to the duct again. Let's pivot the duct around to get a better angle down the side. I will again begin to apply pressure and you'll notice almost immediately that we begin to get excessive bow. Right there is about a half inch of water and that board has bowed too far. If the, uh, it should be a relatively flat surface and you see how much bow we have. As we move on, there's one inch of pressure an inch and a half and we'll get up to two inches. Now remember two inches is where we had the reinforcement in there. If I were to continue to take this up in pressure, this duct would go almost completely round in the middle. So you see the importance of reinforcing duct work as you increase duct size or you increase pressure. If you're going to build larger duct, or you're going to have duct work of substantial pressure, you need to look at the name of duct construction standard, look at chapter 5, it has all the details and instructions on reinforcing duct work.